this morning, these three days, as promised, all about positivity, all about love, all about jump starting a new morning routine. You know, I think it's really important that we change things up in our lives, right? Like it's very easy to fall into autopilot. It's so easy to fall into autopilot where it's not necessarily a bad thing, but before we know it, months have gone by and we are we haven't really hit that feeling inside of us that I'm doing things my way. Autopilot can kind of bring us into a state of obviously the opposite. What What am I doing here? I coach a lot of women in particular who struggle with this because life on the outside seems really good. We've got a great house. We've got food in the fridge. We've got kids. We've got the job. We've got uh, the clothing. We've got all these beautiful things. But then at some point, there's like a, a switch that gets flipped inside that says, okay, well, all of these things on the outside feel and look really good, but why do I feel as though there's something mismatched inside of me? Good morning, Jillian. Great to see you. Welcome. So this is important to understand and recognize that it's imperative. It's important. I think it's a part of our spiritual duty to ourselves that we inject some newness into our lives. And there's two key ingredients. Two key ingredients that if you read about psychology, neuroscience, human performance, two key ingredients that will always come up to what a human being needs in order to feel like they're progressing. And why is progress important? Let's talk about that for a moment. Progress is one of the seeds that gets planted in order for human beings to feel happiness. If you don't have progress, you don't feel happiness. Or at least that's what the research tends to show us is that in order to feel content, but then above that, a level of, wow, my life is filled with like zest and I'm in control. I've got the hands on the wheel and I'm feeling aligned with source and I'm feeling open and positive, that kind of happiness. I know you've experienced that. That happiness comes from feeling like we're progressing in our life. And so progress, if we break down progress, we land on those two little nuggets I was just telling you about. So this morning, what I'd love for you to do, if you've got a journal, got a notebook, grab a pen and take notes because I'm going to be for this first little section here coming in with a lot of wisdom coaching, empowerment coaching tools for you to work into your daily life, things to ponder. Things to contemplate. Okay, Kim's talking about progress. What I'd love for you to do is just reflect without any judgment. Where am I with progress in my life? You know, like, am I letting each day just kind of slip by? Or am I really injecting into my day opportunities to, to exercise these two little nuggets? Let me get to these two little nuggets. You're like, what are these nuggets, Kim? Okay, so... In order for you to feel like you're making progress and in order for human beings to really get to this stage of happiness in their life where they're feeling like things are flowing in a particular way toward a, a destination that you desire and to feel like you actually are vitalized, revitalized, energized. And there's a, the energy. We're going to speak about the big E, big energy in just a second and what that's made up of. You need these two components in your life. One, novelty. Novelty is critical to a human being's growth. And we'll talk about why in just a second. And the second is challenge. So novelty and challenge. Novelty means newness, right? Like we got to switch it up. And that's what I was talking about this morning. Like, come on in, get yourself a dose of novelty, <laughs> That's not too sexy. So I didn't lead with that in the marketing of this, right? But like, but change, we know deep down somewhere in us that change is actually really important. Change is good. That's why we go on vacation. That's why we take down paintings and, and put up new artwork. That's why we change our hairstyles. We know deep down that change is important. But here's what's here's what's really cool about this particular style of change that I want you to think about this morning is 
there's two different types of change in the world. There's change where the world happens to you. And then there's change where you happen to the world. So most of us get stuck in this autopilot where we are letting life happen to us. And so all we ever experience is change happening one direction. Does that make sense? Right? You know what I'm talking about. It's it's, it's the kids get sick or suddenly we lose the job or suddenly that bill shows up or, okay, oh, suddenly there's money that just rolls in and now we're taking a vacation. Um, Suddenly there's the, suddenly But there's another way to do that. And there's another way to be more interactive with your life. And that's what I'm getting you to do this morning by being here. And that's what you allowed yourself to experience this morning by being here and hopefully doing these three days with me, or at least catching the replay, is injecting a novelty by your design, by you deciding and and deciding, yeah, that I am going to decide the novelty. I'm going to decide the change. And then it happens. And then you actually plan for it. And then when that change happens, it's a very brand new, very uh, empowering feeling. Because before the change was happening to us, we got to quickly react. But now in this case, you're planning to change. And that's backed by intention. Can you feel the difference? One is fine. Change can be exciting when it happens to us, but often it feels and leaves us feeling disempowered. We suddenly find ourselves being let go from a job. Oh my gosh, right? That's very challenging. What do we do? Crisis mode kicks in, but we ultimately say, oh, it was because I got let go from that job that I found this over here. I found my true calling. So thank goodness I was let go. We don't celebrate enough the story of, I chose to leave that job, and therefore, I found my passion. That's a story that can happen too. That's my story a time and time again. I know a couple people on this call, maybe Victoria can relate to that as well. And maybe you watching the replay, big choice, big decisions in your life is a huge injection of novelty, and it's scary but you're empowered in that moment. And what would that do for you? Think about that. Just project out into your future for a moment. What would change by design that is empowered all the way? Scary at moments, sure, but more so exciting, more so empowering, more so it's about you deciding that you're choosing you first. It's about you choosing a life that you desire. What if that was the novelty that you led with every day? What would that do for you and your confidence just three, four months down the road? And would you feel more excited in your life? Probably, right? So novelty really tickles some old wiring inside of our Neanderthal brain, our our 200,000-year-old brain that hasn't changed, actually. We're still living with the same 200,000-year-old brain that human beings had at that point, we still have now. So we have the same hardware. We just have maybe different software that gets updated on the brain, but the hardware is the same. Why is that important? How does it relate to novelty? Well, if you can imagine you're in some sort of cave 200,000 years ago, and you're with your tribe, you're with your family, you're with your group. If Anything changed in your environment, that's a big deal. You'd want to know about it, right? If suddenly your water source looked different, if suddenly someone new walked into the cave, who's the stranger danger, right? If if a saber tooth tiger, if there was even just a slight motion over there and there's never a motion over there, the cave entrance is over there, what's happening over here? Your brain is wired to acutely pay attention to change. Novelty to our old brains, our old wiring is a threat. But what it really does, a a potential threat, potential threat, what it really does is arouses us. This is why it's important for feeling progress and feeling happiness in your life is that arousal of the nervous system 
piques our interest. Suddenly we're engaged again with life. Do you see where I'm taking us here? We want to be engaged more with life, right? We want to wake up, know what we're doing. We want to feel like, uh, you know, okay, autopilot Kim. Autopilot Kim is not fun. It's fun for about two years. I've tried it. I can't work for other people. That's it, right? <laughs> Two years is all I could do. And then I've got an allergy for working for other people. I'm an entrepreneur. So my brain is particularly wired to find. If I don't find, if it doesn't happen to me, I'm finding the change in two years. I'm sure you guys can relate somehow. But novelty wakes us up. It stirs our soul. And it forces us to listen to what we really want. Some of you guys are not listening to what you really want. And so we, we silence it. We say, yeah, I'll listen later. I'll listen later. And then time goes by. And before we know it, months have gone by and years have gone by. And every now and again, it comes up and what you really want nips at your heels. And you say, okay, I'll, I hear you. I hear you. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I know that's important to me but I just don't know how to do it. I just don't know how to get there. So one of the things that I want you to start to think about is moving on a small scale throughout your day and looking for little opportunities that you can just place a little bit of newness. I want to give you some examples so you can think about how to really do this in real time. Drive a different way to work. Drive a different way to the grocery store. Walk to the grocery store. You know, um, maybe instead of getting up at 7 a.m., you get up at 6. Instead of 6, you get up at 5 just to see the sunlight and how it's different. And just to let your eyes and your circadian rhythm experience something new. Maybe you always wear that same shirt to church or wherever you go. Maybe you, you spice up the outfit. You put a little pizzazz. You wear a scarf with a pop of color. Maybe you put on red lipstick. I'm going to tell you that works. I wore a red lippy last night for a class. And like, that is a beautiful way. You're just like, here I am. It's totally different. There are little ways to inject newness into your life if you start looking. Okay. So the other thing I want to tell you about more is challenge. Remember I said there's two big elements that you need to be working into your life in order to experience progress. Why is progress important? Because progress leads us to happiness. Progress leads us to fulfillment. I told you guys, you loving this. I hope you're loving it. If you want, give me some emojis in the chat. I love it. If you have questions, put them in the chat as well. Aha, breakthrough moments, put them in the chat as well. Let's make sure that we're connecting also on a community level here this morning. So great to have you, Jillian. Beautiful. So good to see you. So this is really about you and dedicating to your morning. And I want you to walk away with this morning. We're going to move in a little bit. I'm going to take you through empowerment through the body, of course, but I want you to know what you can do every day to feel a certain way, okay? Because it's in your control. It really is. It's in your power. You have the power to completely change the course of your life in one day. I'm going to say that again. You have the power to completely change the course of your whole life in one day. And I know that because I've done that. And I know that because I've witnessed other women who I've coached do that. It takes one decision. And it doesn't take, it doesn't have to be, listen, it doesn't have to be this big decision of I'm going to move. Today's the day. Put the, the for sale sign out there. That's not what we're talking about. You can if you want. But what we're talking about is small, incremental, consistent up leveling every single day. Small changes added up in a month is a is a new person, quite frankly. Small changes every day in a month is a new person. You won't recognize yourself, I promise you. So let's get into challenge, okay? Why is challenge important? Well, just like novelty. Challenge is what our Neanderthal brains had to to work through. Challenge was a sign that the environment was changing. Challenge was a sign you better pay attention because there's something new happening in your environment and there's something you've never experienced before. And if you don't figure out how to do this quickly for our old Neanderthal brains, 
that could mean death. There's nothing more arousing to our nervous system than the threat of death. Of course, we don't experience that every day. That's not our lives any longer. So we need to actually, to arouse ourselves, we need to, by choice, design challenge into our days. Do you see what I'm, what I'm saying? Right? It's not enough for us to let challenge happen to us. Just like novelty, if we wait for challenge to happen to us, we feel disempowered. Oh, it's so hard. I don't want to. Why does this keep happening to me? Those are the things we say from someone who is letting life happen to them. So we're flipping that script. We're we're happening to life. And just like before with novelty, we get to start to plan challenge. What if you planned for challenge? What's on the other side of challenge? Think about the last time you did something that was outside of your comfort zone. You learned a new skill, right? You you learn something about yourself. You challenge yourself to maybe show up, raise your hand more in a meeting to public speak. If it terrifies you, you did it a little bit. That was a challenge. Maybe you did a 5K run. Maybe you did a, you climbed a mountain. Maybe you're going to this summer. Maybe there was a challenging discussion you had to have where, ah, oh, This is really uncomfortable, but I've got to say this to them. And I know, and I got to trust that on the other side of this challenge, I will have clarity. I will feel peace of mind. I will feel like I was heard. I was seen, but more importantly, or just as importantly, I will be transformed because here's what's important about challenge. And this is important. You might want to write this down. It's not about the end result. It's about who you become in the process. And I know you've heard that story before, but really let that sink in and maybe you meditate upon that, contemplate on that today. It's a good one because it's micro decisions every day along the way of challenge. And every moment where you have to ask yourself, who am I being right now? This is a challenging moment. I chose this challenge. Who am I being? How am I showing up? This is important because most of us fixate on, and I used to do this too, and if you've done this, you're not wrong. It's just kind of, we're never really taught how to do challenge. We're just taught at the end, when you cross the finish line, you're going to have a degree. You're going to have a new job. You're going to have a new vocation, a tool. You're going to have a new skill set, public speaking. You're going to have a new foreign language you can speak. Oh, or, or, you know, in my case a while ago, my ex-husband, I suppose the challenge for him was he wanted to get divorced. So his challenge was you've got to speak up. You've got to say you won't want to be married anymore to Kim, that this isn't going well. And you've got to say it because for him at the end, it was being free. And ultimately, that was a great decision, a great choice for me as well. So you, we often get fixated on, well, what's the end result? And that's good. That is good. Play with the end result. Feel the positivity of it. Be thankful of the positivity that's going to come in your life from challenge. But in the meantime, huh, we've got to do the thing. So now it's now this is where I'm coming in and I'm trying to coach you on what to do while you're in the mode of challenge. Because every time, every time, trust me, I'll pay you a million dollars if this does not happen to you. This is how I'm so certain that every time you decide to pick up something that's challenging, you're going to want to stop. Because our brains are wired to feel adversity to challenge. So the very thing that's going to arouse your nervous system, that's going to pique your interest, that's going to re-engage you with life. Yes, I've been re-engaged. This is awesome. I'm even sweating right now. Like I'm engaged. I'm very engaged right now with you. I hope you are too. But like this is your life we're talking about. So now the very thing that has brought you zest again, the very thing that's aroused your nervous system, the very thing that's re-engaged you with life is actually a threat. So your brain is going to do everything it can 
to make sure you do not succeed. Not because it's a terrible brain, not because it's an evil brain, not because it's anything wrong with your brain. Your brain is beautiful, but it's because of a thing called paradigms. Have you heard of paradigms? Paradigms are our old story about who we are. And they're given to us by our parents. They're given to us by authority figures. They're given to us by media, our social upbringing. Before you're old enough to make a choice about who you are and what's important to you and where you're headed in your life, it's given to you. And we, if we're not aware, if we don't do what you're doing right now and find novelty and find challenge and, and find different ways of thinking, we stay that person. And you might go on and have a great life, but I don't think you're going to have your life. I think you're going to have your parents' life. And that's beautiful to some degree. They're not evil people. They're not mean people. They're not trying to screw you up and, ha, you're just going to live my life Wah-ha-ha, all the time, right? Like, no, parents, parent. But at some point, I think it is our energetic responsibility. It is a I think a a moral obligation, yeah, societal obligation that we have human beings that decide to break free of the chains of any paradigm that they've ever felt before, as hard as it is, that we take up the challenge and that we become who we're supposed to be in life. What would that be like? A world, a planet where everyone's actually who they're supposed to be. But the problem is that's challenging. (laughs) it's hard. It wasn't easy deciding to leave my cushy job in the IT world and to leave behind a great salary and benefits and everything that that corporate culture brought. It wasn't really easy to leave that, to come here and do this full time. And entrepreneurship, I will never tell you it's easy, but it gets easier as I learn to practice challenge and as I learn to practice building my confidence and I learn to practice hard skills like this, just going live online and teaching and talking and hearing my own voice and you got to that sound weird. And okay, I practice getting over that, right? And I practice engaging with you. What's the skill you need to practice? Think about that for a moment. What do I really love doing that I'm not giving myself the chance to do more? Write it down, underline it, star it. Just finding awareness of it is so important. And the reason you want to do it, write that down too. Why is that important to you? Why do you love that? Why do you suppose that just came to mind? This is going to be important because make sure you star this and circle line it and under a circle line, circle it and underline it in your notes because we're going to move in a moment. We're going to embody what you just underlined. What's the one thing you want to practice more? And it doesn't have to be your big mission and your big purpose, but what's just one thing you want to practice more? Maybe it's being really kinder to myself. I want to love myself more, you say. Or you say, I want to I want to feel more confident. I want to be a public speaker. I want to feel more confident. I want to get out of my own way, Kim. I keep blocking myself. What's the thing you want to practice? Write that down, underline it, star it. That's going to be really important. And then I want you to think for a moment here about why it's important to you. Another way to answer that question uh, is to put a new question in place. And that other question could be this. When you finish it, what will you feel? So if you were thinking about, I need more confidence. Well, if you became a more confident person, what would that do for your life? Take a moment to just write that down. Take a moment to journal. journal. And And can I ask a question? Oh, I'm so sorry, Jillian. Go ahead and unmute. Like that brings up just like it's one of the most powerful things that I've been sticking to um, is when you said, hey, think about like what future Jillian, how like would she be catastrophizing the situation? Would she be manipulating this person? Would she be taking the easy way? Would she be 
you know, making any of these choices if she was the one that she wanted to be for those right reasons. Like, you know, not why I want to be healthier is really it's going to make me just feel like guilty and shame. That's why I want to because I feel like I'm not. I don't. I'm not there or something. Do you know what I mean? I'm not good enough or something. So that's what feeling brings about. But I guess to bring that around and to make me feel settled if, if I can't see you for another moment is just to say that, like, dude, if you can ask yourself, in any moment of problem or cortisol levels shoot, you know, getting higher, like say, hey man, with the person that I picture myself being, dude, and I see it, I feel who I'm gonna be. Yes, yes. You dig? I see her, dude. She's a bomb. If she, she, you know what I mean? And she's taking even more humble pills than she, I've already taken. But my dig is this: is that I, I see her so much. So now I've just been asking myself. Now, would Jillian really be doing this? How would she act? And it's been, I mean, that's really, I feel like your biggest. Oh, oh we just, okay, maybe she, let's hope she should pop back in. Let's hope she pop back in. Okay. But yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Jillian, please, I hope you come back in. Oh my gosh. Um uh, if not, maybe she's got some technical issues. She'll catch the replay. Jillian, yes, 100%. I dig you. I feel you. That was very powerful. And so now it sounds like where you were going and probably what um, I will agree with you is that it is in every moment asking yourself, which version of me is showing up? And there is no better place to practice it. And there's no better place where it's going to be the hardest than when you are actually challenging yourself. When you have decided that it's more important that I put myself in the incubator, in the experimental zone of challenge, I decide because you're already empowered. As soon as you decide it is powered, even if it's challenging, even though it's going to be hard, you've decided and that's your higher self. That's your future positive self. That's your future Jillian. That's a future Victoria. That's a future Kim. We're calling her in from the future because you can at any given now moment, you can decide who you're going to be. And now instead of challenge being um, us interacting with the challenge from old us, and that's who's going to listen, that's who's going to want to show up every time right? That's who's going to want to show up every single time is old us, younger us, 17-year-old us, 8-year-old us, 21-year-old us. The version of us that's maiden energy, that's how I like to speak of that maiden energy, our fawning, you know, oh, fawn, right? Like, okay, I don't want to be too big here in this moment. I don't want to take on all the responsibility because that means I'll actually have to respond. Responsibility, the ability to respond. I'll actually have to respond. And if I respond, that believes that means I must believe in myself. And if I believe in myself, well, that must mean I have changed. That must mean the old me has really, I've really asked her to step back and she's really done what I've asked her. And then that that means I'm really fully me. If I'm really the full big me in this moment, well, then that must mean I must have gone through something. What did I go through? That's a scary thing, right? Because most of us actually, this is a crazy thing we're talking about right now. We're talking about putting ourselves in the most, one of a very simple, but beautiful, important, stressful situation and to completely rewiring our brain. We're talking about changing up the physiology of our heartbeat and our cells. We're talking about consistently reminding ourselves every day of why we chose this challenge. We're talking about meditating and conjuring up the energy of what it's going to take and the positivity to keep going. This is not easy stuff. So this is why I often say this is the path of the spiritual warrior. So, so Jillian, especially to, because you were brought at that beautiful, thank you, thank you, that beautiful willingness to be seen and to offer that up. You are a spiritual warrior. And you, I know I heard, you know, we heard her say, you know, she's even more bomb. She's like incredible. Yes. So now your, your spiritual job, your, your moral obligation to yourself 
is every moment, every now moment, is to just ask, who am I being? And when you find you're your older self who's less bomb, you just go, ah, oh, that's funny. You have a good chuckle. Look at her trying to take the steering wheel again. And you, nope, <laughs> I've got this. And then you keep calling in the higher you. You call in the higher you who knows who she is, who knows how powerful she is. Now, this is going to be beyond the scope of today. And maybe we'll go here tomorrow. I should have took some notes. Well, I'll just jot it down real quick here because this is a good discussion. This is why I love lives because we can interact and then this is, we just channel, we riff on where is it going. But um, I want to talk tomorrow about stabilizing her, stabilizing the power, neutralizing the power, because this is where, and, and this is kind of what we're talking about today too is when you decide for novelty in your life and you decide for change, I'm going to make a change. What has to happen is that we move through the course of that change. And every moment, we're really being aware. We're paying attention to, okay, which version of me is showing up. And you'll know, not right away, but you'll know when it's an older version of you because you've suddenly shut down or you've suddenly... You're really, really getting down on yourself. You're really questioning. You're comparing yourself. The lower vibrational things, right? Not that that's bad. We love the older versions of us. They're beautiful. They got us this far. Oh my gosh. We love the old versions of us. They're spectacular. But that's not us any longer. We're calling in the higher version of us. We're calling in the more empowered. We're calling in the queen, the sovereign, the goddess. We're calling in her. And that is someone we're not practice at being. And that's all this is. That's all this is, is that we're really practiced at being who we are now. But a lot of us are an autopilot. So if we're an autopilot, we're really practicing the old version of us, right? Because an autopilot means there was a version of us. We set it, we, we cast the mold and then she just took over and then we're just an autopilot. And so that's an old outdated version of us. It's just running in the background, running the script of our mind. And so we have to really do the diligent, mindful work of becoming aware of that and doing something opposite, doing something opposite, doing something that the future version of us would do. We're calling her in through our consistent action. The action is what builds the foundation, right? You following that? That's what builds the foundation. And over time, we rewrite the neurons. New neurons fire together, and then they wire together. And then we learn. And that's all this really is. That's all this really is at a very simple level without emotion involved yet, is we have to get the neurons over here in our brain that were the old Kim, the, the old Jillian, the old Victoria, that that wiring has to somewhat come apart. And we have to have this new wiring over here that is the new you. And once that happens, you'll never go back to being the old you. You're just the new you. And so there's a process involved of moving from one set of neurons set, you know, to, to a new neurological wiring. That's called building a new habit. We know these things. But we have to break it down and make it common sense. And then when it's common sense, we can make it commonplace in our life. And so that's what I'm asking you. What is the new thing that your future self wants to do who's been through the challenge? When you've gone through that challenge, when you're on the other side of it, who do you think you're going to be? Okay, and now you've got that person, right? You've got the essence of them. They can time manage better. They're speaking up more. They, they don't let people walk all over them. I've got better boundaries. I'm eating healthier. I'm vital. I'm really vital, super healthy. <laughs> and I'm feeling really good every day. And, and I can manifest like this, like everything I want is just coming at me and I'm wealthy and I'm healthy and all these things. Okay, well then what's the one thing you can do today? What's the one small thing you can do today that's the action that matches future you? That's how we bend time. That's how we collapse time. We can do that thing right now, and it's her, capital H. That's what we get to do together. So let's bring this into the embodiment because we got to get cooking on the embodiment now. This is how we don't change overnight 
just by using the mind. The mind is where the old story is. So we've got to bring the body into this, okay? When you bring the body into this change, novelty, and the challenge, it helps us to neutralize the challenge. And we'll talk tomorrow about why that is. But when you neutralize it, it becomes a part of you. You identify with the challenge. It's no longer outside of you, ruling on you, raining on you, shitting on you, electrifying you, right? Hitting you. Like it's no longer that challenge. It's you. Oh, I'm the challenge. (laughs) I get in my own way, but also I'm the current of electricity. I'm the energy. I'm the chi. I'm the prana. I am the challenge. And I say whether it's a challenge or not. What if it's just up to me to decide how it's going to feel? What if it's just that simple? What if it's just a decision? This is how challenge is going to feel. And this is how I'm going to feel while I'm going through challenge. So we bring the body into this through the radical ritual method is the method that I've developed that really developed me. Actually, it came to me as I was really, I kept hitting a brick wall with challenge in my life. I didn't want to do it. And there's a story I'll tell later about why. But once we learn to unlock the body, once we learn to bring the body in through breath work and movement and meditation, we can quickly expedite how how quickly we go from old us to new us, how the old wiring can suddenly wire up even faster. And that's because in the body, we stabilize the feeling of change. Does that land? We stabilize it where it no longer rocks us from our core and and shakes us and makes us afraid, but we actually embody it. And so it's natural feeling inside of us. It's a natural feeling. So we're going to start to, so imagine that if your challenge was suddenly neutralized, would you feel afraid of challenge as much? Would you block it? Would you run toward it? And that's where we go from novice to expert. This is where we start to see high performance yielding in your life exponentially because we have flipped the story about challenge. And not only the story up here, but we live it. We are the most powerful one, not challenge, not life, us. And so now it's time we embody that. And that's what the radical ritual method is going to help you do. Okay. New page. Big breath in, let it out. Let all those words just filter through and leave you or stick around, whatever they decide to do. Feel yourself in this moment, feel your energy field. And let's reset now into the embodiment practice. In a moment, I'm going to have us get up and move. And we're going to go through the four parts of a radical ritual. We're going to raise energy through breath work. We're going to respond. Respond is the second stage. What I want you to do is just feel however your body wants to move and you're going to let it do it. Do the weirdest things you can do within the rhythm of the music. Okay. So it's kind of like dancing, but it's more like permission slip giving. Just let your body be a body. That's, that's right. We're going to raise energy and respond. And we go back and forth, raise, respond, raise, respond. And I'll call it out and you just do it when I say it. And then we go into recalibration. Recalibration is I want you to dance ugly. I want you to get out of rhythm. I want you to get destructive. I want you to get really jagged. And then we'll go back into flow. That's recalibration. Jagged and ugly and back into pretty. Jagged and ugly and back into pretty. And then finally, what emerges is stage four, which is reclamation. It's the reclaiming. And then that moment, you're just going to feel it. It just becomes you. And this is when we've neutralized our challenge. This is when we neutralized our power. And it's just simply who we are, the most powerful being on the planet. Okay, you ready? You ready? Okay, let's get this. Let's get this. Okay. Those of you watching the replay somewhere under this video, play along. Give us your understanding of what this moment feels like too, and give us your big breakthroughs. Okay. When you're ready, come on up to standing. Find a little spot in your room where you can got some room to move around. Okay. We just start to shake the body a little bit back and forth. Can you still hear me okay, Victoria? 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Arms go up and down. Inhale, exhale. Arms up. That's your inhale, exhale when they come down. And you're just going to sway a little side to side with the rhythm. Turn up the music a little bit more. Okay, perfect. All the way up. And if you want, you can go a little bit faster in the breath. Inhale, exhale. When your arms go up, that's your inhale, exhale when you bring them down. Energizing the body with that breath, with that vital breath. And I like to turn around at this point and I greet all corners of my room. Just let it know what's up, what's about to happen. I'm about to take over. <laughs> We're about to find some synergy, some harmony. Clear that space. Okay, then three, two, one. Inhale, hold the breath in. Hit that B position with your arms. This is that B for victory. Hold the breath, hold the breath. Exhale, release. And we go into respond. So any way your body wants to move right now. Awakening. The spine, the limbs. There's no wrong way to move. Ooh, give a little shake. Maybe there's just some, some brushing out of the limbs. Connecting with the body, the temple. And then we go back into raise energy. Pumping the arms up and down. If this ever bothers the shoulders, you can go straight out in front of you like this. Now here, what I like to do during this stage is I like to visualize what you wrote down and underlined. What is the one thing you want to inject into your life? What's the one thing you want to practice more? What's the one thing you want to show up more for in your life? Visualize yourself doing it right now. Yes, beautiful. Keep going. Pumping the breath in and out through the nose, in and out. Three, two, one. Big breath in. Hold the arms in that V. Hold the breath. Hold the breath. Exhale. Release it with a big ha. Huh. And then respond. Close the eyes maybe. Just let your body move any way it wants to. Yes. And now try to make a movement pattern you haven't done yet. Notice, just notice, no judgment. Are your movements small? If they're small, can you start to take up more space? Yes. That's it. That's it. And just notice, are you directing your motion with your mind? Most of us are in the beginning, learning how to do this. Instead, let your mind go to sleep a little bit and just let your body do what it wants. If you start to overthink, just stop and then feel, how does my body want to move? And just let it, all of a sudden, it'll just show you how it wants to do, how it wants to be. Go back to that visualization of every single day, you dedicating some time to practicing your highest self. Okay, third round. I always like to do three rounds of breath work. You can always do more when you're doing your own practice. So let's go, arms up and down. Inhale, pump that breath all in and out through the nostrils. Perfect, perfect. And you can dance, you can shimmy, you can move around as you're doing it. Raising energy. Hopefully you're feeling a little warmer too. That's good. Yes, keep going, keep going. This is more than a lot of people do on the planet right here, right here. We're oxygenating our blood. This is going to arouse your nervous system and get you feeling really engaged with the day. Ready? Three, two, 
two, one. Hit that victory pose. You made it. It's just like you blast through that finish line. Woo! You won. Exhale. Release. And let it flow, baby. Let it flow. However your body wants to move. Don't be afraid to make what feels like a silly motion. Be a little weird with it. Be a little weird. Let your body just body things right now. This is where we practice getting out of our own way. Beautiful. Try to move away. You haven't moved yet. Big breath in and out. Oh, maybe you let out a yummy sound or a roar. Or maybe you let out a big, like an animal sound. So as we move, I want you to visualize. Visualization is so important. Visualize how you want your day to go today. And how you want to feel. Feel it right now. Just decide right now I'm going to feel it. I don't have to wait for those things to happen. I can feel it right now if I decide I want to. You are that powerful. And it is that simple. We just need to raise the energy in the body to override any doubt in your mind right now. Okay, we're gonna get ready for a recalibration in just a second. Here we go. Okay, so, fuzzy, all right. <laughs> so feel that rhythm, feel the beat. Get into rhythm. Now what I want you to do on the count of three is to move off beat, get asynchronous, and to just go berserk and let your body do whatever it wants, okay? Ready? And three, two, one. Go crazy, go crazy. Let everything out. Jump up and down if you want. You can scream here. Act like you're shredding up paper with your hands or you're digging in the dirt. Go crazy, go crazy. Let it out, let it out, let it out, let it out. And then go back to flow. Go back to ease. Ooh, yeah. How'd that feel? How'd that feel? Every time you do that, you're showing the nervous system it's safe to march to the beat of your own drum. You don't need to always be in rhythm with everyone else. We can do our own thing, and it's totally safe. Okay, play a little bit bigger. Take up a little bit more room. We only got a couple more minutes left. Yes. Think of how your future self would move right now. Completely confident, unobstructed, flowing freely, wealthy, healthy, vitality. How would she move right now? Woo! Okay, recalibration again in three, two, one. Give me your jagged motion, the ugly motion. Try to get out of rhythm with the music. Let go, let go, let go. Keep letting go, keep letting go. Yes, three, two, one. Go back to flow. Oh. You're safe in that motion. You're safe in that experience. Deepest breath in and out. Oh. Feel. Imagine that there is a fire right in front of you. Can you see it? Can you see a bonfire in front of you? Use your imagination. Notice the flames. Can you see the logs? How are they stacked? And I want you to come up and approach that fire. This fire represents your full empowerment. This fire represents your complete vitality, never dwindling. Woo. Most of us stand right outside of our fire. We never realize that we are the fire. So at some point for the fourth stage, reclaiming, I want you to jump right into that fire when you're ready. You can step, you can walk, however symbolically you want to do this. 
when you're in that fire, you own it. There's no going back today. This is it. You're drawing that line in the sand. You're going right into that fire. When you're in that fire, feel and understand. You are the fire. It only hurt. It only felt challenging because you believed it was separate. There's no separation. Woo, yes. How do you move now that you are your own? You are your own power. You are your own source and vitality. Yes. Surrender right into it. Let that power be everything you are right now. We've got 30 more seconds of movement. If you played small at all, if you back down a little bit, see if you can do 30 more seconds of big energy. 30 more seconds of pure empowerment. Yes. Woo. Slowing it down, slowing it down just for a moment. Feel, slow it down, hand on the heart, hand on the belly. Take a deep breath in and out. Um, notice how you feel. Come back to the breath. Come back to temperature on the skin. Become aware of sensation in your body. Come back to the journal and the pen. And I'd love for you to write down in your notes what that was like for you. Was there a moment of insight? Beautiful job. Breathe as you write. Sometimes I even like to coach uh, clients and students to keep their body swaying, a little bit of stirring in the sacrum and the spinal column, even as you write. And now that the channel is open, now that you've reclaimed and you're 100% who you are here to be, can you feel that in the physical terms, the sweat, the pulse? This, how does it feel? Where do you feel it? Note all of those things. Are you being shown a particular color? If this moment were to have an animal archetype, what would the animal be? What are you being shown? What are you being reminded of? Write it down. And then we bring in the commitment piece, knowing what you want to focus on, knowing the benefits of challenge and novelty. What is the wisdom of your body telling you right now? You can ask it too. You can say, tell me, show me what it is we need to work on, what it is I need to practice and listen for the answer. And you've got it, write it down. Usually it's the first thing that comes to mind. It's really that simple. And now we want to think about the day. So what I'd love for you to do and the rest of this, this week, of course, I'll see you tomorrow and the next day, and we'll keep this accountability going. But today, what is the one, thinking about how you feel right now, what is the one small thing you want to do today? that will allow you to get back into this feeling. Because remember, whatever you're headed for, 
you know, whatever you want to achieve, it's going to be challenging because it's different than your current story. So we have to make sure that our energy stays high. We have to make sure that we take little breaks throughout the day to increase vitality. So what is something that you love doing that would bring you into this state of union, of high energy? Do you feel how you're, you're solid in who you are? Do you feel how the mind is clear right now? You might be feeling some sort of versions of that, right? Yeah, I'd love to know, Victoria, if you want to put it in the chat, how are you feeling? What is sort of the big the big energy that you're holding right now? Can you describe it? And those of you watching the replay, let us know under the video too. <sighs> how do you suppose you will get there again today? This is important. This will, this will check those boxes of novelty and challenge. Because for some of you, you've never thought about how to get to this level again throughout the day. Normally we do it once or we go to the gym and that's it. But now I'm asking, I'm challenging you to really schedule it. Schedule. Because here's the thing. I've got, well, there's a little saying out there in the coaching world. It's not mine but it's what gets managed or what gets measured gets managed and what gets managed gets done. So if something's really important to you, you've got to put it into a measurement system like your, your calendar. The calendar is one of the most important tools. I, I geek out about calendars now, but it is the most important. It's a, it's a book of spells. It's a, it's a recipe book. Your, it's a code. It's, it's, it's very powerful. So your calendar is no longer just something that happens to you, but this is now your opportunity to play schedule in your day. 30 minutes of challenge, 30 minutes of play. Playful, sexy, hot, awesome. Oh my gosh, I love that, Victoria. Dance for energy. Yes, exactly. Beautiful, beautiful commitment. We need to dance a song on the hour today. Excellent. Every hour. Yes, girl. Amazing. Love it, love it, love it. Powerful. And you see how the wisdom's just right there, what's possible, what's capable. So for everyone catching that replay, same goes for you. Make sure you hold yourself accountable. Give yourself the challenge today. Give yourself the challenge and then put it in the calendar so you get those Google reminders too. Because otherwise we will forget. Not because we're bad people and we don't want to do this. I know you do, but now we've just got to make the habits in place. We got to put the habits in place put the behaviors in place that future you would do right now. Okay. Um, this was incredible. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, Victoria. Have an awesome day. Thank you so much, Jillian, for showing up. Those of you catching the replay, love you, sending you so much love. And I will be here again tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. as well as Thursday. And I hope to see you then. Thank you. I love you. Bye.